Welcome back. This is video 13 where we're taking tiny little steps to learn about subnetting. We're going to look at custom subnet masks here. Here's where we've been. We've seen these subnet masks before. Uh, for example, in class A addresses, we've seen a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0, meaning that in the address itself, the first octet in that address is network and the rest are all host addresses. Okay, so that's what we've seen. We've seen class B addresses that look like this, 255.255.0.0. Class C addresses that look like this, 255.255.255.0. Now the zeros, all zeros and all 255s, those do occur um, in things like firewalls. For example, 0000 is often used to represent all of the addresses on the network, and 255, 255, 255, 255 represent a single address on the network. But typically in subnetting, we only use these middle three here. So don't really worry about these right now, although theoretically they're possible. Let's look what happens, though, if we start breaking up one of these octets like this. And this is exactly what we're going to do when we start subnetting, because I'm going to start borrowing bits here uh, from host addresses in order to make more subnets. So this is exactly what we do if we put if we borrow one bit over here, the subnet mask and this these are subnet masks here. The subnet mask becomes 255 dot well what is this if you convert it is 128 right because this is 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 120 that's the 128 place and so you add up you know all the places and 128 so this number refers to 128 if you uh, if you convert it to decimal 128 if you convert this one to decimal 128 plus 64 is 192, so this one is a 192, 255.192.00. Three ones would make a 224, four ones would make a 240, five ones would make a 248, six ones would make a 252, seven ones would make a 254, and eight ones would make 255. If you convert these, you'll discover that that is just the decimal value of this octet right here. So this plus the zeros is every possible subnet mask we can make. Because remember, they have to be contiguous. If I made any other subnet mask, it would make a non-contiguous set of ones. So these are all of the possible contiguous ones. And remember that these can occur in any of the octets as long as everything is contiguous ones in front of it. So here's an example. In this one, I just took the 240. I put the 240 in the second octet. Here I put the 240 in the third octet. And here I put the 240 in the fourth octet. So they can be anywhere in here. And any of those numbers can be anywhere in any of these octets, uh, as long as you only have 255s in front of them. So this is how this is what we call borrowing bits, and we we simply borrow these bits in order to get more networks. But the problem is now there there aren't as many host bits, right? If I look at this, well, if these are networks, then I can only I can't get as many host bits uh, or host uh, addresses out of this particular spot here that used to be all host addresses. So we do lose some host addresses when we do this. So let's just take a class C address, 192.168.5.0, 255, 255, 255, 0. So you know that this first part, 192.168.5, are all part of the network, and that this last octet here, this actually happens to be the network address for this network, but I can make the hosts anything from 0 to 255 here. Well, I can't really use the 0, can I? And I can't use the 255. Those are the network address and the broadcast address. So I actually only can make 254 possible hosts, but we'll talk about that later. So imagine that these addresses, 0 to 255, are 256 beads in a necklace that little Mary over here wants to make. Let me move my picture over there. Little Mary wants to make a necklace, and she's got these... 256 beads and she can make a nice big necklace with that but she doesn't want a big necklace she wants a necklace for 
mom and for grandma. She wants to make two necklaces. Well, she can divide her beads in half. So if she decides to make two necklaces, she could have 128 beads for each necklace. However, remember that when she has 256, two of those beads are cracked. Right? One of them is the network address. One is the broadcast address. Now when she makes two of them with 128 beads each, now she's got four cracked beads because one necklace has a network neck, uh, bead and a, and a broadcast bead, and the other ne necklace has a network bead and a broadcast bead. So uh, she's kind of uh, up a tree here. Every time she divides it again, she loses a few, you know, a few more beads cracked. But if she wants to make four necklaces, you know, one for sister and so on, maybe she's got a sister and aunt, and she wants to make four, so now she only has 64. Well, not really 64. Uh, right, two less, 62 on each for each one. Assume also that she can only make equal size necklaces for now. And assume that she can only buy bins in these combinations with one bin for all 256 beads, uh, two bins like this, so two bins for 128, four bins, eight bins, 16 bins, and so forth. She can't buy one with five bins. They just don't make it. So she can't buy one like that. She can only she can only buy bins like this. And she must always divide her necklaces so that there's an equal amount in each bin. Those are the only options she has at this point. So what does it look like? Well, number of necklaces is the same as the number of subnets. If she makes one necklace, or if we have one network, we can we can put 256 hosts. Well, really 254, right? Uh, 228. Well, really 126. In fact, uh, let's go to the next slide, and you'll and I have usable hosts here. Uh, one necklace or one subnet, 256, but usable 254. So these are always two smaller than the number of beads in each network or hosts in each network. So you can see uh, if she she could make 64 necklaces and she could get two beads in each necklace. That way you can't make much of a necklace with two beads, but uh, in submitting you can. And then at 128 now, she can't really use 128 because there wouldn't be any beads left. There's two beads, but they're both broken here. One is the network, one is the broadcast. So she can't really do this. She can't make just uh, 128 uh, necklaces. So, for equal size networks, what you saw here are all the possibilities we have. And let me go back here and show you again what I mean by that. Right here, these are all the possibilities that you have to make these subnets, okay? That's all the possibilities she has. Oops, I went too far. <laughs> these are all the possibilities she has. So, we do this again by borrowing network bits. And you can see that here. In my case back here, I used I decided to use a 192, 5.0. So the only the fourth octet is what I have. So let's look again here. The fourth octet, if I borrow one, I can get 126 hosts, but I can get two networks. If I borrow two bits, I can make four networks and 62 hosts each. Now I can only get 62 if I add up all the possibilities of all zeros to all ones here I can only get 62 possible combinations I can get four here because I could have uh, 00, 01, 10, or 11 that's four possible combinations uh, with these two uh, bits I could get eight possible combinations here but I can only get 30 hosts left out of this it's really 32 numbers but uh, two of them are poison for network and broadcast, so I can only get 30 possible hosts. And all the way down to here, where, I, yeah, it looks like I should have, uh, be able to make uh, uh, four here, but I really can only make two because two of them are poison. The zero, zero, and the one, one, the zero, zero is the network address, and the one, one is the broadcast address. So all I have left is zero, one, and one, zero. That's all that I can make out of this. So that's it for how we separate this all out. Now, I haven't really given you any practical how do I do this stuff yet, and that's coming uh, in the next video. Actually, I'm going to develop our chart a little bit, our 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 chart. 
to begin to make sense of all this so that you'll be able to do problems uh, in subnetting. So uh, get ready for that one, and we'll see you in the next video.